What you are saying mm -hmm. reminds me of your book, Psychology of Prophetism. Yes. Now, so Psychology of Prophetism very clearly highlights the point that the prophetic religions are dictatorial. Mm -hmm. Now, from that point, but the Westerners, most of the Westerners today, especially the West Europeans, America and South America, Australia, etc. They are democratic people. Do they not find any contradiction between their prophetic religion that is dictatorial and then their claim for democracy? Hmm. Well. That's again a long story. Um, you see, my point in that book, uh, uh, Psychology of Prophetism, mainly is about the irrational origin of the phenomenon of prophetism. Um, I, I, I mean, that book is not a big ideological statement. You know, it was written in a hurry between two other projects, you know, uh, simply because I was surprised to see in India all this acceptance by Hindus of claims made by the prophetic religions, you know. You people really believed that this, you know, God or someone had dictated the Bible, had sent Jesus, had dictated the Quran. I mean, it's really important to disabuse you people of that. You know, in the 19th century in Europe, in German universities, they started, you know, the first critical Bible scholarship, uh, the Leben Jesu Forschung, you know, the, the research into the, the life of the historical Christ. And so you, you got for the first time a, a critical uh, appreciation of the biblical stories. In fact, it starts with the ex-Jewish philosopher Spinoza, uh, 17th century, he was the first to really look rationally at the biblical tradition. So in the 19th century, this is starting to become a real uh, academic discipline. They are starting to do it uh, in earnest. Unfortunately, in India that didn't percolate at all. In India you had characters like Vivekananda, like Gandhi and so on, who took an interest in Christianity, but from the wrong side. You see, this new development that was taking place in Europe of a critical reading of the Bible, that was totally lost on them. They completely ignored that. Instead, they took uh, from Christianity the, the really you know, ridiculous pap that was fed to you by the missionaries with this totally idealized, silly image of, of Jesus. And so, you know, nowadays you see very many English-speaking uh, Hindus uh, have been totally uh, led to believe and to interiorize that uh, missionary image of, of Christianity and of Jesus. And so, you know, when I saw this, I thought, you know, I have to contribute. To this is so ridiculous, so abnormal, so irrational that whatever little I can do to tell them about the real story, I have to do. So in a hurry, I wrote that book, you know, to, to, to say, well, you know, what are you still talking about? You know, you are living in the past. Okay, if in the Middle Ages they believed all these silly stories, yeah, well, what can you do? But I mean now that you have such a, you know, rational, enlightened alternative, you still go back to this, you know, missionary propaganda. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, you know, as a Westerner, I have little to offer, but I think the Western religions I know. And, and so the points where that differs with what Hindus believe, 
you know that that needed to be highlighted yes but so you were asking and I repeat what you had asked uh, whether you know the the attitude nowadays of European intellectuals to Islam has something to do with the kinship between Islam and Christianity well yes and no no, in India, for example, mm -hmm. uh, Christians and then Muslims mm -hmm. join together to oppose any Hindu Hindu movement. Yes. No. Well, it is yes, it is very similar. Oh. Okay. You see, as I try to explain, the the dominant opinion is ex-Christian, mm -hmm. and so that's something else than non-Christian. Ex-Christians have a certain relation with Christianity, a certain concern about Christianity, namely they are against it. And so therefore, uh, they side with any possible enemy of Christianity. Now, the formidable enemy at the moment is no longer communism, it is Islam. And so you see very many intellectuals that used to be communist or pro-communist are now pro-Islamic. Mm. And, and so the whole leftist movement uh, employs its practiced machinery of sidelining people, of censorship and so on, no longer in the service of communism, or not alone, but mainly in the service of Islam. And so that's not because of the kinship between uh, Islam and Christianity, that's far more because of the common interest against Christianity of the leftist tradition and Islam. Yes. That's the case in Europe. This is a different situation in India. Here.